Our topic for this session is discrete versus continuous solvers. I'll go ahead and open up a new model. Just to refresh your memory, you'll find the setup for these under the simulation menu in the model configuration parameters. Simulink offers one discrete solver, so if you are using discrete time logic, select that solver, set your solver to use a fixed rate, set your simulation start and stop times, and set your step size, which is under additional options. For example, if you want your logic to update every 100 milliseconds, then set your step size to 0.1. For continuous time solvers, on the other hand, you have a number of options. Note that you'll want to set up the continuous time solvers as variable step type solvers. These allow you to set things like your max step size and your tolerance. Basically, you are trying to optimize a trade-off here. You want a solver that is very accurate and yet still fast. I recommend that you start with a more accurate, powerful solver, like the default ODE45 Dormand Print Solver, and only try changing to a less powerful solver, like the ODE23 Solver, if the simulation times have become unacceptably long. The min and max step size specify the shortest and longest time step that the solver can take, so relaxing your requirements for the maximum step size allows the solver to find a solution at fewer points and can therefore help speed up the simulation. The absolute tolerance is a limit such that if a large change is detected in a state or signal, Simulink will reduce its step size and therefore slow down the simulation in the process of trying to maintain its accuracy. The relative tolerance does the same thing, but using a percentage of the state or signal's value instead of an absolute value. These two numbers basically tell the solver to slow down in order to maintain the fidelity of the simulation's results. If the simulation is running very slowly and you can afford to lose a little accuracy, then consider loosening up these tolerances a little bit to reduce the time that you are waiting on the solver to complete a simulation. If you are still having trouble after increasing your relative and absolute error tolerance and going with a lower fidelity solver, consider switching to a fixed step solver. These will simply solve for a solution with the time resolution of a time step of your choice. These are usually the only solver settings that I adjust, but MathWorks website has more details on the solver settings in case you wish to dig deeper. Unfortunately, they don't offer very good documentation on the solvers themselves, but if you look for numerical methods documentation online, you should be able to find good documentation on some of these solvers, like how the Runga Kana methods work. You may already be familiar with this material from a numerical methods class or something similar. All right, I hope you found this lesson informative and helpful as you are creating models in Simulink. Topics like numerical solvers may seem rather mundane and may seem like things to rush past on our way to creating models, but understanding them is really helpful next time the simulation is running slowly or isn't giving us the fidelity that we need. Next time, I'm going to present my first of a few sessions on how to implement some common algorithms in Simulink and how to solve some common Simulink modeling challenges. There are certain kinds of algorithms and structures that come up a lot across a number of disciplines, and I want to show you some of these to provide you with extra tools for next time you encounter one of the common problems that these structures help resolve. Thanks for following along with all of today's material, and I look forward to showing you some more next time.